it's an honor to welcome you today to the 2014 annual EDA conference. Everywhere around us, we are seeing security and defense challenges materialize. Europe cannot have the ambition to be a security provider, to stand for its values and interests, without the capacity to sustain this ambition. The political will is there. Let's make sure that the implementation is not missing. European defence can only be successful if underpinned by the necessary military capabilities. And it's no secret that we still lack critical capabilities. The question is how to deliver these capabilities with reducing defence budgets. The answer is through cooperation, cooperative and comprehensive. That is the way forward. We have four programmes on which we have to make progress. Air-to-air -air refueling, drones, cyber defence and satellite communication. It is about time to see the geopolitical landscape of our times. If we take a look at the neighbouring regional reality, we will clearly see an arc of instability stretching from the Ukraine to the northern source of Africa. The growth of our economies will stumble if we do not respond together in the crisis enveloping in our immediate neighbourhood. The sovereignty of our national states will suffer if we do not empower the sovereignty of Europe as a force to be reckoned with. We need to try to find ways in which to cooperate that put the, the national reflexes on hold for a bit and try to be practical and pragmatic. I think the best way to do it is to start off in smaller groups and let the group grow bigger when you mature. The, the most significant barrier is the mindset in our heads ourselves because we have a tendency especially in times of, uh, like we see right now, that we focus much more on, on national issues. Pooling and sharing and doing things together, cooperative, really makes value for money sense and is the most efficient way to deliver our defence capabilities. This is really the way forward. It's clusters, it's regional, and this is important. It's either lose something or cooperate with others. The distinction between military and civilian technology, I would argue, is anyway becoming increasingly blurred. We can't afford to pay for the same technologies twice. We need to exploit synergies with what is done on the civil side to avoid unnecessary duplication and increase our cost effectiveness. To be able to move forward in a collaborative manner, member states need a set of common requirements and a robust assessment of possible solutions to these requirements. And we must, once we've identified the requirements, stick to it. We must learn from the past and we can't have 20 plus variants. What we're missing in my point of view in Europe is the long term view. Yeah, the impact is uh, that uh, we're losing the capabilities in the industry. My first request is have a roadmap for the next five to ten years for European defence. We have in each of the country dedicated certifications. The Tiger was flying in France already five years and still we could not fly it in Germany. It needs the political pressure from the top down to, to enable us to, to have more standardization, to have all these issues where we have the lacks. Cooperation in this field is often not instinctive. It's not easy. It's not the walk in the park. And that's why the European Council invited the European External Action Service through me and the European Defence Agency to develop a policy framework to foster more systematic and long-term defence cooperation. At the European level, a really big apartment building. All of us separately can only afford one apartment. So the question is who will be the architect? And the architect can be the EDA. For instance, we have austerity in many member states now, lots of defence cuts, but member states haven't coordinated at all on the cuts they're making. 
which means that there's no sense of overall European capability that needs to be preserved. So there are very practical small steps that can be taken to get us started. Unless and until the member states meet those three conditions of thinking defence matters, knowing they can't do it alone, and realising they need to act through the European Union and the European Defence Agency, then the EDA won't reach its full potential. It is now up to policymakers in the member states to alleviate the capacities above the national level and dispense national sovereignty concerns which are becoming increasingly irrelevant in the years ahead. In 2010, I really underscored the role of EDA, which is more than an acquisition agency. Uh, in the next decade, it will be an adult when it's 18 years old, and it really can play this role of being the lever of the integration of European military systems. We have to take more responsibility for our defense and our security. It means that uh, there should be more Europe in the European Union and more Europe in defence. My key learnings is firstly that everybody concurs that there is no alternative to cooperation. And that was not obvious and everybody wants cooperation. Now it's how to do it. It's not about just words, it's really making sure that we have the instruments, the solution to take action.